I'm on the phone. Wouldn't it be really rude of me to have a conversation with you but be on my phone at the same time? Now, there's a lot of people that share with me that they can multi-skill. But if you understand neuroscience, if you talk to neuroscientists about the brain's ability to do two things at once, you might be able to do two things at once, but the question is, at what percentage? Obviously, there's a 50-50 split. If I'm trying to talk to you and be on my phone at the same time, 50% of my focus will be on my phone and 50% will be on you, which means I'm not focusing on you. So here's a really interesting question. Is your smartphone uh, adding value to your life or devaluing your life? Does it have consequences if you use it poorly or disrespectfully? And does it matter? And because I'm an old lady and because I remember when phones used to be connected to the wall and the only thing we ever used the phone for was to talk to people, uh, we don't use the phone very much anymore for talking. In fact, some people have phones that they don't ever talk on. They just have text messages and emails and obviously banking and music and internet and all of that stuff. And what does it matter? Because obviously the world's changing and Roa, you're just talking old fashioned and people are always going to have their phone in their hand. Our phone seems to become part of our anatomy. Our anatomy is changing because our head's in this position all the time. So our, our uh, spinal cord is changing to try and save us from this horrible neck position. But do we need to save ourselves from what our phone could be doing to our life? Now, there's a lot of massive benefits. But if you had to live without your phone, this is my first question. If you had to live without your phone for a day, for a week, for a month, could you? And how would it make you feel? And has it become an addiction? Because when you're addicted to drugs, any kind of drugs, it's not the drug that you're addicted to, it's not the gambling that you're addicted to, it's not alcohol or cannabis or pharmaceutical or recreational drugs, it's what it does to your brain. It's the dopamine rush or the serotonin or the adrenaline rush that you get from a drug. So are you addicted to your phone? And if you are, is that a good thing? And there's no judgment here. I'm just asking on behalf of our future adults. Because we now have children who don't know what it's like not to have a phone. And we have tiny babies where their growth is being affected, their brain growth is being affected because they're on a, some kind of device all of the time. So does it add value? Of course. Could it devalue? And is that an important question to ask? From a business perspective, from a relationship perspective, and this is just because every day I talk about be healthy, fit and strong, have a career or business that you love, be financially free and have great people in your life. If you want to have a career or business that is successful, which means you can be financially free, you have to have great communication skills. That's the people part. And one of the things that our phone has done, it's either made us incredibly disrespectful and rude because we don't return our calls, we don't return our messages, and people do expect that if, if they contact you, that you will contact them back. So how do you make sure that if somebody does contact you, you don't have to have the negative effect or the negative consequence of somebody thinking you're rude or disrespectful? And there might not be many of those people left anymore because I'm an old lady and there's probably only old ladies and older people that think it's rude or disrespectful not to return a message. But there are people who do think it's disrespectful not to return a message. There are people who think it's very rude and disrespectful for you to have your phone on when you go out for dinner. So I'm in my house right now and I often have people around my tractor, which is how the table that we sit at, it's like a bar when people are here. And it's just a fun thing to take note of. I came in and I have a giggle, that came in my gorgeous husband, is if somebody's got their phone on, or they're, or they're even if it's upside down, uh, and it's on vibrate, when it vibrates, obviously it takes attention away from the conversation. So came in and I have many times, and we always have a chat about it after people leave, we will stop mid-sentence. Well, if we're in the middle of a story or in the middle of a conversation, if the phone rings or if somebody's on their phone or people aren't paying attention, we just stop talking. Or we add some funny story in. So our favourite story is about the five hippopotamuses that were wearing pink and purple dresses that were drinking margaritas playing pool which is absolutely ridiculous. But we add that story in there when somebody's not paying attention. And what's so funny about that story is so many people go, oh, really? Because they weren't listening. Now, there is a challenge in any relationship. If, you're, if the person that you care about is talking and you're not listening, your personal relationship, your clients, your customers, your members, if you're not paying full attention, so lean forward, maintain eye contact, open body language and actively listen, 
If you're not doing that, people feel disrespected or they feel that you are indifferent to them. So the opposite to love is not hate. The opposite to love is indifference because love and hate are very powerful emotions. I always share that. But if somebody is indifferent to you, it means they don't care. Something is more important than you. And how many times have you felt that? And it might be yesterday or in the last year or the last five years where phones have become such a normal part of life uh, that you felt ignored that somebody feels that the person that's on the phone is far more important than you. If you're at a social event, at a wedding, at a funeral, God forbid at a funeral, how rude. Uh, if you're out for dinner and you're with a group of people and you're on your phone, the person that you're on the phone with wasn't invited. You wouldn't bring somebody to a wedding that wasn't invited, that would be rude. But if you're at a wedding and you're on your phone, you've now brought somebody to that wedding, distracting you from the experience that wasn't invited. That's rude. Uh, and I don't, I didn't put that into a question form because there's a lot of people that don't care. And I get that. There's a lot of people that just don't care about being rude. They don't care about being disrespectful. They will be on their phone forever. Uh, here's where it becomes very sad though. Have you seen families out for dinner where everybody's on their phone and nobody's talking to each other? Or even worse, where young kids, little kids, want the attention of their parents or they want to talk to their parents or they'd like to just have a a lovely social experience with their family and everybody's on their phone. Uh, too many times, and this is one of the reasons I don't like to go to other people's houses anymore, is I don't want to interrupt people's phone experience. And it seems that wherever I go, uh, and in business I get I have to deal with it. If I'm doing business with somebody and they're on their phone, I have to deal with that. But in my personal relationships, if somebody puts whoever's on the phone before me, I don't care, that's okay, but now they have revealed that I'm not very important in their life and I don't, I don't want to take up their time. Uh, if, if your kids are feeling that, if your partner's feeling that, if, you, if you've got to have your phone with you all the time and you can't live without it because you've got to be on social media or you've got to watch what's going on. And that's one of my really interesting questions. I've, I, I can never, I've never had an answer to it. Why is somebody else's life more interesting and more important than yours and the people in your life? Surely you are the most important person in your life. You need to look after you. And then the people that you love, if they feel that you are distracted or you don't care about them or you're indifferent to them, how long will that relationship last? Now in a personal relationship with a partner, the relationship probably won't last very, very long at all. Uh, your kids might not want to be around you because you're always on the phone. Uh, if, you're, if you are a teenager, you wonder why nobody wants to hang out with you because you're always on your phone. Uh, and the really, the really sad one now for me is because I work with a lot of school teachers and, and the principals of schools, is we have a lot of children now because of their phone, they have created a personal, or they've created a persona of themselves that isn't them. So they've got pictures of themselves out on the internet, they've got um, a story about themselves out on the internet that other people are seeing on their phones, but that's not who they really are. So they not only don't know how to communicate, because all they know to, how to do is to text, uh, it will probably come a time where spelling and, and writing are, are, are skills that nobody has anymore, and that's okay, that's probably called development, because you don't need to spell and you don't need to, to know how to write when you're on your phone all the time. But your ability to communicate effectively, if you're always on your phone and you can't have a conversation with somebody face to face, how will that affect your life? Now you might not care, but there are certainly people who feel offended, disrespected, uh, they think you're rude if you're on your phone when you're with them. So just something to consider. Is your phone adding value to your life? And of course it does because it's so convenient to have everything at your fingertips in your hand, be able to do everything on your phone. But what's it doing to your relationships? What's it doing to your business? Uh, what's it doing to your life? And if you want to live your life to the max, when was the last time you got outside, fresh air, sunshine, got puffed, did some fun activity and you didn't have your phone with you. We were out recently hiking and it was a beautiful day and we were, the views were spectacular and there was two young people walking, a guy and a girl, and they were both on their phones, both heads down, walking on the track. So they were doing two things at once. They were on their phone and walking on the track, but they were experiencing nothing of what was around them. Now, people like to live like that, I get that. But there's so many things in this world that are so beautiful that aren't on the screen. And then the one that's really fascinating to me, and there's, I love music and I love live music, 
But most people don't see live music anymore because when they go to a concert with their favourite performer, they're filming it on their phone. So they only see that performer through their phone, which they could have stayed home. Why spend two, three, four hundred dollars on a ticket to a concert when you can watch it much better on your screen at home? Your film of a concert is not going to be that good compared to what you can watch on a proper produced documentary or, or film of that concert. And you can't experience the people around you. You can't experience the performer. Is it rude to the performer? So instead of clapping and cheering and being involved with the performer at the concert, you're on your phone videoing what they're doing, living your life through your phone. How about live your life to the max with or without your phone? Live your life to the max. Super duper doo. How are you living my life to the max? Woo! -hoo!